That's true. All right, so anyhow, my name's Chris. Uh, I'm doing the, um, the uh, one gallon all grain uh, weirdo beer. Um, instead of using sour cattling or pitching any lactobacillus, I picked up a pack of Lollaman's Billy Sour. Uh, supposedly, this is a yeast strain that actually produces lactic acid in its, uh, uh, during its fermentation of alcohol. Uh, however, they say that by the time the first uh, batch is done, 90% of that souring will not transmit to the next batch, and anything else is just going to compete with it, so you don't have to worry about it contaminating your equipment and making everything you brew after the fact sour. Again, you know, not living in the fermenter for very long. We hope. You're gonna test that theory. Yeah, I, I'm using the one gallon. I'm still gonna use my uh, my little side filter, my little side siphon, and see what happens. Okay, Matthew, how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, I, I am not infecting my equipment. My mom told me never to do that. Uh, yeah, but you didn't listen to half the stuff your mom told you not to do. Yeah, but I'm not intentionally infecting my equipment. <laughs> Sounds kind of strange. But in any case, uh, I am doing it through a hell. So. Basically, I got my warp up uh, to 212 degrees just to kind of disinfect everything in there. And then I crashed it at 110 degrees through a chill plate and some very cold water. And uh, at this point right now, I threw in some good belly mango juice, which has got some lacto in it. And it's going to sour it up for the next couple days. And then from there, I'm going to boil it up and throw all my other ingredients in there, like salt, colander seed, that's not right? Coriander. Uh, what she said. Uh, and hops. And once Calendar I, is the dreamy thing. Whatever. <laughs> what she said. And coriander is an alien in the comic books. That's true. So I have a coriander problem. But in any case, uh, uh, no, you have an alcohol problem. Well, there's that too. I don't know why you keep saying that. Oh, it's still my turn. Anyway, so <laughs> once it's done boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to the fermenter. And once I ferment it with some Cephali Zero Five Ale yeast for approximately five to seven days. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some pineapple in there for secondary fermentation. This is for you, sir. I forgot to put my phone on silent. But that was pretty funny. Back to you, Bjorn. Well, so how did you solve the problem of when it gets cooled and ends up in your one kettle, that putting it back to the original kettle that you wanted to actually cook it in? Right, so. Um, Without infecting all of your stuff. Right, so we're trying to keep it all in one kettle. First of all, um, when we're chilling, we're not throwing any lacto prior, okay? So uh, we're, we're just bringing it down first. And we wanted to bring it down from 212, obviously it's boiling, down to 110. So what I did was my hot liquor tank turned into a cold liquor tank. And basically I threw some ice in there and I threw a pump in there and the water came out of the cold liquor tank into the pump, through the chill plate, and then back in the cold liquor tank. So basically I'm recycling cold water. Meanwhile, I'm also pumping the malt, or the wort, I should say, uh, through the chill plate in the opposite direction back into the kettle, uh, my original boiling kettle. So you're gonna transfer of heat. And the colder that the cold liquor tank is, uh, you'll, the, the faster that it'll chill. And then you have a flow. So the faster you move the flow, the faster the, warm, the chill plate will go. So if you wanna chill it dramatically very quickly, you open it wide up. I open it up halfway, got down from 212 to 110 in approximately 20 minutes. And the same kettle. Uh, so that's how I managed that. All right, do you still have the uh, the container of the Good Berry, Good Belly shots to show them? Because you yeah. didn't use the shots like I've seen before, you used like a, an actual carton of the stuff. I have to go find it, but then I have to walk in front of everybody and they have to check me out while I do it. I'm right. cute, <laughs> but I mean. You, you, you can find it in the stove. It's, what is it, a quart? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go get it. I'll be right back. So while he's getting that, Bjorn, what are you doing? So what I'm doing is, so I have to, Matt has graciously allowed us to, to do all this at his house. So I have to take all of my stuff back to my house. And unfortunately, I can't um, bring my work back in my kettles because, A, one of them has a lid, but I don't trust taping or whatever it and up to the point that it will slosh and leak on the way home. And the other one doesn't have a lid and that one will definitely slosh on the way home. So what I did is I took the wort without adding the lacto, um, let it cool down enough, uh, put them in what will become the fermenters just to get them home. 
And so one of them comes actually with a scoop top lid, so that's on there. The other one I just put an airlock in. It's enough to get it home where it's not going to end up all over the car. And then, so basically, yes, it is chilling much more slowly. I will complete the cooling process when I get home, and then tomorrow I will transfer everything from the fermenters back into my kettles, uh, add the lacto, and then I can seal them at home and let them stay in a nice, cool, quiet, dark spot for the three days um, that are, you know, a ish for them to sour. And then uh, I will do the 60 minute boil to kill all the bugs, and then put a bit in the fermenter with the actual yeast that we'll be doing the fermenting, and we will go from there. So I found my lacto. Found your lacto. So this is good belly probiotics. You can get it at Sprouts, which um, I don't normally shop at. Uh, but the very last ingredient is Lactobacillus planetarium 29.9b. I didn't say any of that right, did I? Yeah, you're pretty close. Pretty close? All right, well, close I got, enough. I got that going for me. Also, it's got a little vitamin D. But anyway, <clears throat> and this is the mango style. It's a mango juice drink, so that's going to help with the mango. Uh, obviously, like I said later, I'll be throwing in frozen mango in the mine. So we'll see uh, how that all occurs. In addition to the pineapple, or did you mean pineapple? Uh, sorry, mango. I meant mango. Okay. It's not because I'm drinking. Yes, it is. Never mind. <laughs> and that's and actually that's a good thing to call out. So remember, you know, yes, we have. Um, well, for those of us who are lucky to, we have amazing brew stores open in our community. Definitely more than there were back in the day. Um, that can help us do this. But don't get hung up on that. You know rigidly following a particular recipe. Most ingredients can be gotten in some way, shape, or form from other places. Um, you know, things like lacto is, is, is one of them. I mean, it's how a lot of people make yogurt uh, or other things that you're, you know, that you're trying to ferment and, and things like that. Um, and if you're adding, if it's a fruit component or something like that, it doesn't necessarily need to come in a baggie. It doesn't need to be something that you order online. It doesn't need to be something that you got from Amazon and have, you know, one day shipping or whatever. You can go out into your community, um, sometimes even in your own yard, if it's mangoes. Maybe you have a neighbor who has a tree that has mangoes or we do. doing citrus. You that. Yeah, there's, there's one across well, the street. She's, she's talking about that. Um, oh, sorry. If, or what have you, you know, some people, if you live in a rural area, Maybe you have access to corn, rice, barley, uh, wheat, or whatever. So maybe this is something that you can have milled yourself. You can get as close to your beer as you want to. And, you know, again, I purposely chose the malt extract to, again, show that there's so many ways of brewing beer. It can be exactly as simple exactly as complex or exactly in the middle as you want it to be. And you do have freedom over the ingredients that you put in your beer, again, as much as you want to. And some people, you know, if it's something that you have to follow a recipe so many times, but when you, once you get used to it, you don't need the recipe anymore. And, or you, you know, maybe you have a recipe that's like, oh, well, I want to tweak this a little bit. You know, I've been doing it the same way 200 times you know, I know how it's going to come out and maybe I want to, you know, fiddle with these things or maybe add something different or, you know, it's like making bread. You know, you get to a point where you can kind of do it on autopilot and you start to uh, do additions and subtractions and allow the recipe to sort of grow and change. And beer not only can and does, but has historically been doing all of this since beer was first even being brewed on purpose to begin with. So one of my constant messages is don't get hung up on the process. Don't get hung up on how you're how you're getting there as long as you do get there. The only thing that you know you, you probably want to be a little bit truer on is sanitation because sometimes not all bugs are good bugs and sometimes things drift in that shouldn't. But other than that uh, for the most part, you're, you're safe kind of looking at a recipe and going, you know, all right, I don't have this, but I think I can substitute something else. 
or um, maybe, all right, this recipe was written for a certain flavor, but I want a different flavor and I want to change this. Or maybe, you know, my, my living situation has changed. I don't have the room for the equipment and the ingredients for all grain like I used to. Maybe, at least for right now, um, malt extract is the way to go for me. And all of that is fine. Um, as long as you're brewing beer, in some form or fashion, you're okay. And that's what we want you to do. Or to put it more simply, have fun. Have fun. Drink beer. Drink beer. Drink beer. Drink beer. Talk about beer and make beer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then at the end of the brewing day, scotch and steak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, there are rules. <laughs> Duh. And a nice shrimp boil. So we, we, we got this. Yeah, I'll pass uh, on the shrimp boil. Thank you. At any rate, so thank you all very much. And until next time. Brew on. Okay, now, now make sure you hit the button to stop it. Yeah.